Police stop crime during the storm. The Army called up on storm watch. And many homes away from home. Good evening. Well, the question on everyone's mind tonight, when will it be over? Second question, not necessarily in the order of importance, when will the lights be on again? At this hour, hundreds of thousands of Quebecers are still in the dark. Here are the figures. 987,000 subscribers province-wide are still without electricity. That's down, though, from a million thirty-five thousand earlier tonight. 571,000 homes are affected on the South Shore. On the island of Montreal, 213,000 customers have no power, and that's progress. At 6 o'clock tonight, that figure was 236,000. In Laval and the Laurentians, 187,000 are still without lights, an improvement of 28,000. And in all of this, we hope a note of optimism. Let's ask Don McGowan. Well, a bit of a break coming up in about one hour, Bill. The western edge of this current band of freezing precip has just cleared Cornwall, Ontario. It should clear the greater Montreal area around 1 or 1.30 a.m. Then we will get a few dry periods. If anything, it'll be very patchy, and those dry periods could continue into tomorrow morning. Now, it all comes back before midday tomorrow. Why? That system now east of Chicago following a same track as that eastern low clearing us and moving off through the Maritimes. We expect more freezing drizzle, freezing rain mixed with ice pellets beginning, as we say, before midday tomorrow and ending tomorrow night for the greater Montreal area, perhaps 10 millimeters. 10 millimeters of freezing rain and ice pellets. It's not a very strong system. It's small but fast moving. That's good for us. So perhaps by 8, 9, 10 o'clock tomorrow night, we can bring closure to this ice storm. The weekend, not bad. Let's give you some good news. Behind that system, some uh, snow flurries for Saturday morning in its wake. Cloud will have temperatures certainly seasonable in the normal range. It gets better the second half of the weekend. Sunday looks good. We can celebrate with some sun and some cloud and near seasonable temperatures. On Monday, we'll have some snow. Say it slowly. It's so romantic. Snow on Monday. That's it for now. More later in this hour. Bill? Thank you, Don. MUC police have three times as many officers patrolling as usual to maintain public safety and prevent looting. And as Caroline Van Vlarnigan reports, they're making it very difficult for anyone to take advantage of this emergency to rob homes. While thousands of Montreal area residents settled down for the night in shelters, police were out in force making sure their homes were safe. A lot of presence, police presence, uh, in order to deter crime. 1,000 police are patrolling the MUC in 500 identified cars. And since yesterday, they've been systematically checking many homes to make sure that no one has been left behind or is refusing help. We're suggesting that people be very careful, especially senior citizens. That's why our police are going door to door, for senior citizens especially, because seniors are afraid to, lose, uh, to leave their homes because they are so afraid they're, that their homes will be robbed. But they are the ones that are most vulnerable in cases like that. Already five fatalities, three involving seniors, have been attributed to the storm. Since the city of Montreal declared itself to be in a state of emergency, 900 people have sought shelter in the city's shelters. There was even some consideration given to opening up the Big O, but since most of the effect that are in the city's west end, it makes more sense to use schools near them. But if need be, other shelters are on standby. Meanwhile, some 150 via rail passengers stranded in Montreal sought shelter in sleeper cars. Um, C.R. Giddings from London, Ontario, and I'm trying to get to London sometime soon. Since hotels in the city are all booked solid, VIA offered the sleepers after having to cancel their trains. Caroline Van Vlardigan, Pulse News. Needless to say, hydro uh, crews are working overtime, and much to their dismay, most of the work they completed late yesterday afternoon was completely undone by the batch of freezing rain we had last night. Cindy Sherwin on that. Hydro-Quebec crews have been working feverishly to restore power, but the weather is certainly working against them. We were putting back uh, power in some lines, and uh, five minutes after, lines uh, went out again uh, because of the uh, weight of the ice on the wires. 
Employees at this hydro call center are working 16-hour shifts, taking note of complaints. With so many sectors hit, the utility has had to prioritize. Priority one includes hospitals with multiple operating rooms, the Metro and Hydro-Quebec administration centers. Next, other hospitals or health centers, prisons, water filtration plants, airports, fire and police stations. Number three, tunnels, TV and radio stations, refrigeration centers. Priority four, industrial sector and refineries. And low priority, priority five, residential sectors and commerce. So it may be a few days before your home is homey again. And Hydro cannot help you with everything. There are poles connecting wires to your home that may not belong to Hydro. If your mast is bent or if a branch is on your wires, don't touch it. Call your electrician. This is not uh, our responsibility, it is yours, and we will not be able to restore power to your house until this is done. Over at 911, their phone lines overloaded. They feel the same way. They can help the public with serious problems only. Uh, working all day and all nights, and uh, we are. Uh, between 11 to 12 people at the same time. But this people, manager uh, says they will be able to continue handling the extra load if the public only calls when they're really in danger. Cindy Sherwin, Pulse News. There were two grim reminders today to be very careful during these power failures. Two elderly people died in a fire at their town in their town of Mount Royal home. It appears to have started in the basement of the couple's home at 150 Vivienne Street. Officials believe the blaze was started by a candle. And residents of two LaSalle apartment buildings were forced out of their homes this morning by a carbon monoxide leak. The 60 people were forced to use buses as makeshift shelters. Residents of 250 and 290 Bishop Power started to feel sick at around 9 o'clock this morning. Firefighters were called and confirmed that carbon monoxide was indeed a problem. The buildings had been without power for a couple of days, so a generator had been installed. It had begun to leak carbon monoxide. Many residents had already left. Most of those who stayed were elderly, and they needed help to get out. This afternoon, Civil Protection Authority said the power failures mean that not enough residents have received the, the message about the dangers of emergency heating alternatives in the home. As we've heard, people are dying and collapsing from use of barbecues, propane, and other heaters inside their powerless homes. And they're ignoring warnings about touching wires or cutting trees down. The head of Quebec Civil Protection suggests with the power out, it's more a question of not hearing the warning in the first place. I suppose, I don't know if you can estimate it, but I suppose that with the TVs and with the radios, we maybe uh, get in touch with 70%, 75% of the population. So we also ask the local authorities to knock on the doors and to go and see people, especially where there's no electricity. The dangers of poisoning or hypothermia are a constant threat at a time like this, so authorities suggest that anyone staying at home take several precautions. Do not use camping equipment indoors like kerosene or propane burners. For those who have gas stoves, don't leave them on for extended periods of time. If you have a generator, make sure you use it outside. And be careful if you cook anything in your chimney, fatty meats can leave a greasy residue and thus increase the chance of a chimney fire. And we'll have more news and a brief look at the sports right after this. Canadian forces have been called in to help civil authorities cope with the blackout. Stéphane Giroux reports. The first units began to roll out of Valcartier in the early afternoon. 600 members of the Rapid Deployment Unit had been on one hour standby, packing their gear, saws, axes and machetes to clear trees and getting ready to do whatever it takes to help the civilian authorities. Their main task, though, will be to assist Hydro-Québec. To evacuate uh, the, the, the population, to help the Hydro-Québec, maybe to get to uh, the, some uh, remote regions or remote areas where they cannot get to their own vehicles. So all these tests are going to come forward as we uh, will see what kind of test is given to us. Those troops headed for St. Hyacinth. That will be their jumping off point to the region south of Montreal, the hardest hit by the ice storm and the blackout. Jump, jump. They reached St. Hyacinth this evening. 
Among their expected duties, they'll be providing beds and other accessories to emergency shelters. It's an unusual assignment for these men, but with military discipline, they say they're up for the task. We just finished a meeting with uh, Hydro-Quebec, uh, trying to find out what would be the task, a uh, specific task for us to help them to uh, accelerate the work that they're doing now. In effect, they'll be assisting Hydro-Quebec in cutting down trees, for example, so power lines can be fixed. Here in St. Hyacinth, the desolation is similar to what has hit Montreal. Everybody that is getting here is really surprised uh, with what they see. It, uh, it's, it, it's really worse than what we uh, without. At this hour, some 2,500 soldiers from the Valcartier base near Quebec City are slowly making their way to Montreal. And they'll start deploying their relief effort early tomorrow morning. Stéphane Giroux, Pulse News. The ice storm hit hardest on the south shore. Last night, ice on transmission lines toppled towers and electrical lines. Major highways closed and whole communities were left without power. Joe Singerman was in the region all day and he filed this report. Voltage lines came down in the night, unable to support the tremendous weight of the ice. High tension pylons snapped like toys. Stretches of Highway 112 from Maryville all the way to St. Paul d'Abbotsford were closed because of power lines crossing the road. In communities between Maryville and Rougemont, power and telephone lines snapped like matchsticks. On Saint Césaire Road, firefighters and police were called in to rescue an elderly lady, a handicapped woman. A hydro pole fell on the home and the car. We met up with this convoy of linemen who drove to the South Shore all the way from Long Island, New York. They worked for a Connecticut-based power utility, and to our surprise, most were French-Canadian heritage. I'm originally stands at Quebec. And uh, what's your name, sir? Remy Perrault. Another, another Francophone? Yeah, we're working in down uh, New York right now, but we came, down, we came up here to help everybody. And how long do you think it might take to restore power if they're uh, About a week. I would say about a week. The arrival of reinforcements will help speed up repair work, but the damage is extensive and from all appearances will get worse before it gets better. Joe Singerman, Pulse News, Marieville. Life has been no easier in the off-island community of saint Lazar. As of today, that entire community is without electricity. Jackie Rourke on that. We have been uh, for three days now and then we just lost our phone and then we're running out of uh, firewood as well. Uh, we, uh, we got good neighbors and we managed to get some from them. But uh, right now we're getting pretty low and uh, the fireplace is not very efficient. The, the temperature in the house is about 40, 45 degrees. And so we're looking around to see if in case we have to move out, you know. <laughs> so that's why we came here to have a look without the uh, accommodation here. This area on St. Dominique Street is in trouble. Several power lines are down and transformers have blown. It will likely be several days before power is restored here. And in the highly forested areas of Cedarbrook and Saddlebrook, crews have cleared trees from most roadways, but stronger winds are expected to snap many of the trees still standing. And people aren't the only ones affected by the storm. I got to take a horse to another stable. A tree fell on, his, on the barn, so I'm just moving him to a friend's place. Residents here in St. Lazar remember ice storms of the past when it's taken nine to ten days to restore power to the area. With the number of trees and power lines down, it may well take that long this time around. Jackie Rourke, Pulse News, St. Lazar. Now, as unheated homes become unbearably cold, many are forced to leave home to find warmth. Fortunately, there's no lack of places to go. Most municipalities have set up well-run shelters. Bob Benedetti visited the one in Point Claire. Ever think you might sleep in a shopping center? Well, it's not all that bad, says Leah Chernovsky. She and her friends spent the night at Fairview Point Claire. Propped up benches, and uh, there was uh, security guards, two security guards, and two um, police officers that patrolled the whole night. Yeah, security and was very good. Excellent security. They were very, very good. But last night, a lot of people still slept in their own homes. In front of the fireplace. It's very cold, so we put on the, the fire and uh, all huddled up together. Five of us. But tonight, many have been forced to abandon their freezing homes. Fortunately, there's no lack of places to go. 
Many shopping centers like Fairview Point Clare are staying open all night. And most municipalities have set up shelters like the one at the Point Clare Aquatic Center. It's warm, there's food, and there's things for the kids to do. But it's tough on seniors, uprooted from their familiar surroundings. Can we get you a name tag? We're going to go walk. What's your name? Okay. But amid the chaos, there is a bright side. I've never seen so much sharing. The police came to our apartment this morning to make sure everyone was okay. At least one good memory of the storm of 98. Bob Benedetti, Pulse News. Hospitals across the ice storm area have come under tremendous pressure. In addition to treating patients, they now have the added problem of what to do with patients who are treated and then can't return to dark and cold homes. Brian Britt on that. At the Montreal General Emergency Room, the storm has been responsible for more than the usual flu cases. Uh, we're seeing uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, we are seeing uh, trees falling on people's heads. A half floor has been set aside at the Montreal General for patients who are well enough to leave but can't go to shelters. As well, overnight facilities are available for staff members and their families. At the Lakeshore General Hospital, the patients have been coming in all day. On a normal day, about 15 ambulances arrive. The past couple of days, arrivals have tripled. We've had uh, several people come in with fractures, as can be expected. We've had uh, over 10, maybe 12 people that came in with carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, luckily, they've all done all right. Um, and, we've, and we get the usual winter illnesses. We get the pneumonias, the bronchitis. The Lakeshore General has a main hydro line and a backup line. For a few hours today, both were out of commission, and the hospital had to get by with power from a generator. That left electricity only in the ER and a few other key areas of the hospital. The lakeshore has been severely crippled, but the staff is carrying on. We're treating everybody that comes in, uh, patients who no longer need active care but can't go home. We're segregating them into another part of the hospital where we can just provide basic uh, nursing care. Uh, we've t shut down all the operating rooms except the emergency operating room. Social worker Monique Renault left the hospital last year. The storm brought her back today as a volunteer. I could see that the situation here in the emergency room was rather critical, so I thought maybe I could come to the hospital and lend a hand, mm -hmm. since I had worked here in the past for 10 years as a social For Monique worker. and the others at the lakeshore, the priority is to place patients after they've been treated. But in the middle of a blackout area, that is proving very difficult. Brian Britt, Pulse News. If you do decide to leave your home tonight or tomorrow and seek shelter, here are some tips from the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation on how to prepare your home. The CMHC says you should close the water supply coming into the house. Open all faucets and allow them to empty if the temperature falls below zero for a prolonged period. Empty the hot water heater. Cut the current and unplug major appliances. Also, because the threat of break-ins, the MUC police force has twice as many officers as usual on patrol. Still, they say make sure you lock the doors, lock the windows before you leave. And if you're still not sure whether to stay or to go, authorities say keep this in mind. If you're cold and there's a shelter or a friend's house nearby, go there. Don't take any chances. And where's all this going? We'll ask Don McGowan when we come back. Well, Bill, this band of light freezing precip, it's very light right now here in the north end, will clear the Montreal area around 1 or 1.30 a.m. We'll get some breaks overnight and some dry periods into tomorrow morning. Here's a look at the satellite sequence. Find the sunshine. Well, there on the west coast, a beautiful day, especially on Vancouver Island, then cloud across the prairies, northwestern Ontario, solid overcast, the lower lakes, southern Quebec, of course, into the Maritimes and Newfoundland, and all along the Atlantic seaboard. Now, one system south of us weakening, heading for the Maritimes, our present weather maker, behind that low, we will have a few breaks tonight. Now, the second one, now east of Chicago, not a major system, fast moving, a weak one. It will sweep south of us tomorrow. So we'll bring back the freezing rain and periods of ice pellets. We feel sometime before midday tomorrow, it should end tomorrow night. For the Montreal area, up to 10 millimeters of that frozen stuff again. 
and by tomorrow night, as you see, the system will be in the Maritimes. We hope by 8, 10 o'clock tomorrow night, we can say fini to this, and that will be the last wave, and we'll have to deal with the aftermath. A word about the eastern townships. They had very heavy rain there today, especially along those border communities. Fredericksburg on the Vermont border measured 50 millimeters of rain today, 30 at the airport at Sherbrooke. Again tomorrow, they'll have, a, have freezing precip at first, like here in town, but changing later in the day to rain. Could be very heavy at times, again, along those border communities. Now the weekend, it looks pretty good compared to what we've had the last several days. We'll have cloud and breaks on Saturday and perhaps some flurries and then a good day on Sunday and maybe some snow to measure on Monday. Doesn't that sound great? Lows and highs now for our forecast area in town dropping to minus four, zero the high tomorrow, minus seven and minus three up north, minus two and zero, Sherbrooke and the townships, minus seven and minus five where it's snowing at Quebec City. The five-day menu, ice pellets, freezing rain ending around 1 a.m. Tomorrow, freezing rain, ice pellets beginning before midday, ending tomorrow night. Windy out of the northeast, Saturday cloudy with breaks, 40% chance of flurries in the morning. Sunday, a fair day, some clouds, some sun, high of minus three, that's three above normal. Monday, we'll have intermittent light snow, perhaps five centimeters. Bill Wright, now the present temperature is minus four. I am heading out to Beaconsfield, and I'm going to cut some trees for Mayor Kemp. So, Bill, you have a great night. See you. Thank you, Don. Comes in handy when you're walking underneath trees in these days. Uh, Chris? Uh, Canadians with an 8-2 victory tonight over the New York Islanders. That game was all on that. Go to commercial. And the As I mentioned, they're back in action against the Rangers Saturday. Keep warm. Drive safely. Good night. And welcome to the Small Special, Small Pulse Special Report, Ice Storm 98, Day 5, as our coverage continues. Uh, civil protection people and all the others involved in the emergency measures plan held a press conference this afternoon, brief reporters on the latest, and our own Cindy Sherwin is back in the newsroom with the latest on that. Cindy, what did they tell you there this afternoon? Well, they do want to reassure Montrealers and people in surrounding areas that uh, things are under control. However, they are concerned that things could worsen somewhat before they get better. And that's particularly because they feel that all those people who have stuck it out in their uh, chilly homes may have uh, sort of had enough of it by this evening and may flood some of the shelters and overwhelm them. So they are a little concerned about that. Uh, they had about 15,000 people who showed up at about 200 various shelters uh, that are sort of authorized, you could say. There are so many shelters out there that people have put up themselves makeshift shelters but there are 200 that they at least know about that are official uh, so they are trying to warn people to try and prepare for the worst in other words they want to prepare for an increased demand over the next few hours they want to tell people that they should bring essentials from home they are lacking the essentials like pillows and mattresses and blankets so if you are coming uh, the the civil security says your homes are intact people are in good health bring what you need to stay comfortable because they cannot keep up with that demand there are also reminding people that the food in their refrigerators if it's been off for 48 hours or more is no longer good just throw it out they do not want to see a rash of food poisoning cases at the hospitals uh, some of the hospitals are overloaded enough so that's something they want to insist upon and that's also why they feel that they might see another uh, uh, rash of people running to the shelters um, they wanted to um, also remind people that municipalities should uh, try and kick in early in case the power does go out in the future municipalities should try and get together and make their own shelters, open up schools, what have you, gymnasium centers to try and help people who are there. They also put out a request for generators, not the domestic kind of generators, less, but the, the major ones. ones to try yeah. and, yeah, to try and back up the shelters should something go wrong because they're taking care of so many people. I know that also the SQ played a role. There's some talk when it comes to people evacuating their homes, looting and vandalism. What did the SQ have to say about that? That's right. At this particular press conference, uh, there was a chief inspector from the SQ there, and he uh, said that they have uh, about 300 officers patrolling the city streets. Now, that's on the south shore, but also on the island of Montreal. And so they say at the moment they have not had any major problems with vandalism, but they are counting on the public to look out. In other words, if you see something suspicious, uh, if you go back to check on your homes and something seems a little bit fishy, to please Please give them a call and to please let your neighbors know where you are and your whereabouts. Try and communicate as best as possible. We also know, Cindy, that there are thousands of troops who have come in from as far away as uh, Valcartier. Uh, you had one of the uh, top brass of the uh, Canadian forces there. What do they have to say about their participation in this? That's right. Well, he's a major in the Army. His name was uh, Marc Rouleau. He's with Public Relations. And he said that the uh, armed forces right now are 
around. They're in town and they are working. Only about 50% of the troops, however, are out in the field. And that's really for practical reasons, partly because uh, some of them are resting up, getting oriented, and uh, it doesn't serve anybody to have them all out at once, getting tired out. They know that they will need them around for a little while, so they're trying to pace themselves. They have also helped out with equipment, with sort of uh, uh, kitchens that they can help with people, and um, also with various generators, equipment that they've helped the shelters out with. And they'll continue to receive some equipment less as well from other parts of Canada in the next few days. All right, thanks a lot, Cindy Sherwin in the newsroom. Of course, Cindy thanks. will have a complete report coming up on Paulson 6. Time now to check in with uh, the people of the last couple of days. I'm talking about Hydro-Quebec. And for that, we go down to uh, Hydro-Quebec headquarters at the uh, corner, of course, on René Lévesque Boulevard, where René Arsenault is standing by with the latest on that. Good afternoon, uh, Madame Arsenault. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Let me ask you, I can't hear you, but uh, will you please answer for us the question in terms of the latest numbers? Um, we have about 902,000, I believe, a little more than that now, last couple of hours. How are things going? Are we going to see it get worse or better in the next couple of uh, hours and then days? My latest figures are 956,000. We believe there may be a bit more homes that are out of power. We haven't been able to get the very, very latest figures. On the island of Montreal proper, I was told an hour ago that it's, we're talking about 200,000 homes and roughly 600,000 on the greater uh, Montreal South Shore. Is there any way that it's possible for those that have gone out more recently may come back sooner or is it just no priority, no order at all involved in this? Do we if know where it's going to come on first? If I heard you right, you're asking about our priorities to restore service? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, but it, you were talking about priorities, I believe. I'm just wondering if A, you can list the priorities, and B, tell us where, yes. in fact... Uh, ...revenir un peu à la normale à Montréal. Dites-moi, ce midi, vous faisiez appel uh, aux retraités, vous leur disiez, on attend votre appel, on aurait besoin de vous aussi. Oui. Vous en avez eu, des gens qui vous ont oui, rejoint? Oui, oui, mais maintenant, c'est la ville qui appelle maintenant, parce qu'ils vont chercher des gens spécialisés. C'est surtout des gens spécialisés qui manquaient. Alors, actuellement, la ville fait même les démarches auprès des retraités. C'est pas un appel... No, we're mobile. So there's really an emergency uh, importance to Montreal to call this emergency. There are people who need shelter, need protection, need care, We're, and everyone is working now. We have the 5,700 employees on the job, 3,000 workers, blue collars, removing the trees, branches who fall down. There's 20,000 trees in the city of Montreal who fell down. Branches, not part of trees, and it's quite dangerous also. So we hope that we get a break from the weather. We hope that we coming hours there will be no more rain and that we can work during the weekend to let's Mr. bring back normal life in Montreal by Monday. Let's hope. Mr. Bork, let me ask you a question. You've gone around to the shelters, you've yes. talked to your citizens. Yes. Uh, how do you assess the situation? Is it going well? Yeah, it's going well as far as the, the shelter are concerned. And people are very happy to be there and they're, they're, they'll look after them. We have their section for elderly, section for the kids, for families, and there's food, there's meal, there's and uh, they are, of course, together. There's a huge sense of solidarity. There are lots of volunteers in each shelter. I went to Notre Dame de Grasse, I went to Côte de Neige, I went to the East End, to the Plateau. But the worst conditions are in NDG now. Look at, you, I don't know if you hear the branches falling down behind me. So it's all over the city like this. So we need a break from the weather. But it's, you know, the situation, the main artery are open to the uh, traffic. Now we are closing the the downtown, the core of the city, people are have to go back home and stay home for the, the weekend so that we can work and, let's say, improve this condition before Monday. Mr. Burke, let me ask you, at what point will you decide it's okay to lift the uh, state of emergency? What will uh, determine Normally, that? we'll see. Uh, we, need, we need at least two, three days ahead to know. We need first that this weather change. We need, of course, if we still have rain, if we still have those uh, lack of electricity, however, it's a, there'll be a problem. But if the electricity come back, the heating will be back, and then we can secure the people. Then we're going to follow with the, the branches with the snow removal, which is really an, our task to do it. Uh, but now we need, of course, to see, let's say, it by Monday before talking about if the end of the state of emergency. Mr. Bork, uh, the Jacques Cartier, the Champlain and Victoria Bridges, all three of them are now closed. That's limiting access to the island of Montreal. Is that a concern of yours? Yes, Victoria is closed, but Jacques Cartier normally I, in Victoria and Champlain should be open. And the metro is, I hope, is running now. So, uh, of course, for this weekend, we, we prefer that there's no, not too many people who come in the in downtown of the city. So we let the civil servant, we let the 
employee to work and the blue collar in the army, the soldier, the 700 soldier working with our crews to, to improve the, the condition in the city. You know, Mayor Burke, of course, the metro also went down for a time yes. today. People had to be released there. What's the latest on that? Do you know? The latest is back on, uh, is working now, actually. And I hope it's going to keep working during the weekend. But now okay. it's the, the downtown area is, is shut down. What is your advice to people who are watching tonight? The message that you the want message, to get across? The message is to keep faith, to keep confidence, to stay home. And uh, if they are some, they, they like to spare some time with their old citizens, or other citizens, go to the shelters and help them, support them but stay home. And if you have, of course, heating and lighting, if not, you better go yourself to the shelter. But normally by this, by the weekend, we should be ahead of, uh, the worst should be behind us. All right, thank you, Mayor Bork, very much for joining us. I know you're a busy man this evening. Thank you. Thank All right, you Mayor Bork much. joined us from uh, City Hall, of course. Now, one of the things that everyone is counting on, not only at this shelter, but all shelters are volunteers. And we have one man who's been very busy, and you're just 17 years old. Yeah. Chris, what's yes. your last name, Chris? Pam. And how did you end up uh, getting uh, involved in this? Congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much. We got uh, we got power back uh, a little bit on, on uh, I think it was Tuesday, and you heard about the shelter. Yeah. I heard about the shelter was being set up, so I decided to come over. I put in some uh, put in some time, and I uh, came back yesterday, and I worked from, uh, I was here at 9, around 9.30. I left around uh, just after midnight, because we got a new shipment of food in, in the kitchen from uh, one, of the gen one of the many generous sources that's donating food to all the needy causes and I've been here since around 10 30 this morning and we're probably gonna get more food after dinner so we're stocking everything I'm probably gonna be here till around uh, till around t uh, midnight or just a little bit after again tonight you know one of the last times this happened was back in 1961 people said back then you know it, w it was the worst ever now they're calling this the worst storm of the century you realize this is history what are you gonna remember about this this, is, this is history I'm probably gonna remember how much my feet are yeah. how much my feet ache because <laughs> right because because no I've John Denver's ex-wives do battle over his money on ET The end of a week no one will soon forget. Good evening. Well, the crisis which is gripping our city is not letting up. What has become the storm of the century continues to hammer the metropolitan area and beyond. Civil protection authorities are pleading with people not to call 911 unless there is a life-threatening emergency. The system is desperately overloaded. Hydro-Quebec has been working relentlessly at trying to restore some sense of normalcy. As fast as it brings back power in one neighborhood, another falls victim to the storm. Here are the latest figures now from Hydro-Quebec, 600,000 people I make that 956,000 across the province, 600,000 on the south shore of Montreal, 195,000 customers on the island of Montreal are still in the dark as we speak, 145,000 in the Laurentians and the Ottawa, a total of 16,000 people in the Beauce. But finally, there is some hope in sight. The relentless freezing rain that has pounded us all week is about to end, and that's uh, almost a promise from the Meteorological Department. Don McGowan joins us now. Uh, Don, can you give us this good news? Bill, the champagne is chilling <laughs> as we speak. All day long, we thought this would end around 8 this evening. we are push that back a few hours. There is a small pocket of freezing precip, another band departing Lake Ontario, sliding to the south of us, so this should clear the greater Montreal area. We're now saying by midnight. Right now, here in the north end, I think the committee out here agrees this is straight rain. It's not, not even freezing. So we'll have occasional straight rain and freezing rain between now and midnight. A few flurries as the temperature drops to minus 4 after midnight. Cloudy breaks and flurries tomorrow. Doesn't that sound great as we deal with the aftermath of the worst ice storm on record? More later. Bill? We'll certainly take it, Don. Thank you, and talk to you later in Pulse. All emergency measures, needless to say, are being taken. Organizations seem to be working closely together to try to get things done as efficiently as possible. Quebec's civil security says everything is under control, although it may get worse before it gets better. Cindy Sherwin explains. According to the civil security, about 15,000 people stayed at 200 shelters around Montreal. However, many who have been sticking it out in their cold homes over the last few days may not be able to take it anymore, and Pierre Martel says the shelters may be overwhelmed tonight. We urge you to bring with you, if you go in a public shelter, 
to bring your own mattress, sleeping bag, and your personal uh, domestic things. Martel also wants to avoid cases of food poisoning, a distinct possibility. Right now, we have passed the 48 hours period during which food is still good in our fridge, even without power. So we expect that food is no good anymore if you've been missing electricity for more than two days. While hydro crews work to restore power, the shelters are concerned about losing power themselves. If uh, people hearing me or seeing me uh, can help us with uh, big generators, I would, uh, not domestic ones, but I mean uh, generators that would be needed for backup in uh, hospitals, schools, or those type of uh, things, please let us know. He urged people to remain calm. We should see some significant relief, he says, in 48 to 72 hours. Cindy Sherwin, Pulse News. You might have noticed uh, the soldiers around town and uh, in areas around Montreal, more than 3,000 of them, in fact, uh, now being deployed in Montreal and, of course, in the region's hardest hit by the storm. Many of the soldiers arrived early this morning from their base out at Val Cartier near Quebec City. And as Joe Singerman reports, the military hasn't been very original in naming their work. Not surprisingly, it's called Operation Icy Rain. Many arrived from their base at 5 o'clock this morning. With little sleep, the soldiers really didn't care where they slept after a long and difficult journey from Quebec City. Parts of Highway 20 were closed because of downed power lines, so the soldiers diverted their convoy to Highway 40 on the North Shore Highway. Five soldiers were injured, however, one seriously, when their convoy was struck by an out-of-control tractor-trailer truck, midway between Montreal and Quebec City. When the convoy finally arrived in Montreal, many of these men told me they were shocked to see the extent of the storm damage. Today, personnel prepared auxiliary generators for emergency shelters, schools and hospitals, or wherever else they could be used. After public security officials met with the top brass of the army in Quebec, the commanding officers of the various regiments met in turn with their officers to brief them on their assignments. Now our primary mission is to support uh, civilian authorities, local authorities, uh, in order to uh, solve the problems created by the, by the by bad weather. Uh, early this afternoon, uh, we have about 200 people that will go out. Uh, they will uh, primarily uh, help to clean up the streets, uh, remove the branches, uh, the trees that fell uh, on the streets, and uh, which prevent the, uh, the, the normal traffic of vehicles. But the commanding officer of the 12th Armored Regiment reminded his soldiers they are not here to enforce the law. Which means also that uh, we might help in uh, creating uh, some centers to, uh, to welcome uh, some refugees uh, with, uh, with kitchens or, or uh, beds, uh, but the security will be left to, to the police uh, forces. There are 3,100 soldiers now deployed in Quebec to assist with civil protection. Soldiers from the 12th Armour Regiment are here, as well as the Royal 22nd Regiment. The 2nd Battalion has extensive experience in rescue and civil protection. They were deployed to help during the Manitoba floods of last May. We were deployed uh, last year for three weeks in Winnipeg with uh, B Company. We were the first to arrive and we assisted uh, the French communities over there, uh, St. Boniface and all that. They were the first ones to be flooded. Corporal Williamson and his fellow soldiers will be deployed to the West Island, the east end of Montreal, St. Bruno, Maryville and St. Hyacinth, where the 5th Artillery Unit is working with Army engineers and Hydro-Quebec to help restore power. Shortly after we conducted our interviews at the Long Point Garrison, the facility lost all power. But the soldiers say that's all part of their training. They say they're prepared to change their plans within several minutes' notice, and that's exactly what they had to do this morning. They have not been told how long their mission will last here in Quebec. No one really knows. Joe Singerman, Pulse News. For hundreds of thousands of people all across the province, home is no longer a place to retreat to. It's a worry rather than a place to unwind and rest. Family, friends, neighbors, they've opened their doors to as many as they could. And thousands of other people have turned to shelters, such as the one at Loyola High School in NDG. Leslie Roberts joins us from there now. Les? 
Good evening, Bill. And like so many uh, community centers and schools right across uh, the Montreal area, the South Shore and parts of Laval, of course, and now spreading into eastern part of uh, Canada in the Maritime Provinces, they've had to open shelters like this one. Uh, this has been open since the four days now, almost uh, the, going into the fifth night, they tell me. And uh, there were about 120 people here this evening. Uh, many of them are frail senior citizens uh, living here in the NDG area. We also have some disabled people as well. They are sleeping here, they are eating here, and they are being taken well care of, so they tell us. And we're going to meet one of the people who has been here since day one. I'm pleased to welcome Barbar Geoffrey, and this is your fifth day here. Yes. And how's it going? Very good, very good. We have a eat, we, do, we have a drink, it's, and uh, we're sleeping, uh, and we play too. Is it, is it getting hard though? I mean, you thought originally you were going to be here a few hours, right? Yeah, yeah. And? But uh, it's starting now. I don't know when it's finished because yeah. it's three, four days. I don't know. Maybe take one week, maybe. I don't know. You've gone back home, right? Yes, I uh, back two times because I have a, a little cat and uh, fish. I bring the fish here. Okay. Yeah. And the cat's still at home? Yeah, still at home. I'm living in some uh, kind of uh, food. And, uh, I'm living there. All right, very good. Thank you. Con uh, you Thank welcome. you very much. Good luck. Thank you. She's just, of course, one of the people, and she make, raised an interesting point, Bill, about the pets. I've talked to a number of shelters, not only here, but out in Point Claire, that if it's necessary, bring your pet to the shelter, and they will take care of them. But please, as the authorities have said, you must leave your home if the conditions are unlivable. That's the latest from here, Bill. Thank you very much, Lass, and we'll be back with more of the ice storm of 98 after this.